What up YouTube, it's your man MD Jonesy 529 and today I'm going to show you how to turn your PS1 game from this to this using the best graphic settings within RetroArch. Let's get started. First you want to boot up RetroArch and load up the Beetle PSX hardware core then load your content. Within your content pull up the menu, I do so with F1 and go down to settings. Now to get the most of these settings, we'll be using Vulkan as our hardware renderer. Vulkan just has the best graphical features right now. If your PC is not capable of Vulkan, you can still get a lot from this video. Just keep in mind your results may fall short of our example. Now first we will up the resolution to 8 times. It's the most I can handle with my PC when combining with these other settings. As you can see, it drastically changes how defined the game is, but uncovers some noticeable graphical glitches. We will fix that as we go through our settings. Next we will be removing dithering. As you can see, it eliminates all those dots that were blanketing the screen and adds more color depth. Now we're going to turn on texture UV offset to mitigate texture seams. Next up we will be using a texture filter. By default this is set to nearest, which is close to what you'd experience on a stock PS1. And now we're going to change it to XBR. It smooths out textures to be less pixely, and I like how it looks generally. It definitely adds to the load on your PC, and if you need more performance, you can experiment with this option, or just keep it at the default. Now we will turn on Adapt Smoothing. This smooths out 2D artwork and UI elements without blurring 3D rendered objects. This setting is only supported by Vulkan. Next up is Multi-Sampled Anti-Aliasing. The default is one times, we're going to crank that all the way up to six times. This gets rid of a lot of the jagged edges in 3D models. For the next setting we'll be turning the PGXP operation mode from off to memory plus CPU. This will fix a lot of the jittering in 3D models. If you experience problems with this setting, consider changing it to memory only instead as it is less buggy. It introduces some holes in the 3D model but we will fix this in the next option. And that option is PGXP Primitive Culling, and we will be turning this option on. Keep in mind, if a setting has PGXP in the name, it will be disabled if PGXP Operation Mode is off. And what Primitive Culling does is reduce holes in our 3D models. Now we're getting somewhere. Next option is PGXP Perspective Correct Texturing. This setting eliminates position dependent distortion and warping of textures. This option is only supported by hardware renderers. Now our last option is kind of a bonus one and this is the widescreen hack. Most games this is a bad idea as it a lot of times it screws up the UI elements or shows parts of the screen you were never meant to you know see but with games that are mostly or all 3D you have a better chance of getting good results. And for this we'll be setting, we'll be turning it on and make sure the aspect ratio is set to 16 by 9. And, but we're not done. I still have these black bars on the side, meaning I'm in a 4-3 aspect ratio. Uh, and to fix that, we will back up into the RetroArch video settings, go to scaling, and set the aspect ratio to 16-9. And there you have it, the best graphics settings for PS1 emulation. You may need to change some settings depending on the game, but for the most part it should be compatible so long as your PC can handle the load. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, did these settings help you? Let me know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. It really helps me out. Uh, until next time, peace.